Hello. 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 Hiya. Can you hear, hear me? me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you fine. Brilliant. <laughs> the classic start to a Zoom call. Yep. I will keep this view as well. So there's both of us side by side. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so how the hell are you? I mean, what kind of a question is that? <laughs> We're all, I mean, who knows? How do you know? I mean, it's, it's very hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah. Not really sure. No. I think we're okay. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Just about surviving. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. So I guess you've been doing some live streaming, haven't you, from Ronnie Scott's, have you? Or? Not a huge amount. Not a huge um, amount. Um, they've been pretty good at spreading stuff around um so it's um yeah <laughs> it's they, they've had an awful lot of different things on which is i mean pretty much what they should be doing yeah, most yeah. of the time anyway i think so hopefully kind of gone are the days of that sort of closed shop right thing a little bit which is just generally better for the music scene as a whole i think but yeah you haven't bumped into Louis by any chance, have you? He's been doing some live streaming, I think, from Ronnie Scott's. Do you know him? He, he lives a few, he's, well, his parents live a few doors up from us. So. Oh, right. Yeah. May, I mean, maybe there's there's quite a, a sort of a big team of people running around when they're doing that. Yeah. Uh, that side of things. Um, so possibly. But I mean, the last one I did was probably last year. So if it was a sort of brief, hello, then I might... I might not have. Oh yeah, no. Oh, well, he's a Norwich. Him. You might, you might bump him too. His name's Louis, and he's he's a Norwich boy. So. Oh, excellent! I'll keep an eye out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no. I'm really, I'm really sorry. I have to apologise for being so stressy right at the beginning of lockdown when it, everything just suddenly, like, completely went bonkers. <laughs> Don't worry. I mean, nobody really knew what on earth was going on with anything. So. No. But I didn't, I didn't get a stressy vibe from you. So. Oh, you did. Oh, that's good. Phew. <laughs> no. Goodness. Because you know what happened with us? Like, it was ridiculous. We were supposed to start a residency at the last wine bar, you know, in oh, Norway, yeah. which is a really nice gig. And we had all guests lined up and everything. And we yeah. actually had the lights delivered to our house because we were going to create this sort of like jazz club vibe down the basement. And we had the lights delivered the actual day when it actually, everything just totally like stopped. <laughs> yeah. So I just, luckily, my son is a professional live streamer. So I was like on the phone to him, on the phone to everyone, like getting favours and everything. And within a week, yeah. we had our front room turned into a live stream studio. <laughs> and we've been yeah. doing that every, ever since. Amazing. It's the adaptability of musicians. It's just the way like, it goes. It's been insane. And I mean, the thing is, and it, we've got like an international following now and they've all got to know each other on the chat and everything. It's been oh, insane, you know. Brilliant. Yeah, we, we've raised a lot of money as well, all through donations, and we've been able to pay out musicians. We've we've had guests on, been able to pay them out, pay the mm. money out, and help them out that way. So it's been brilliant like that as well. So it's like yeah, amazing. It's um funny how, uh, like having to change your circumstances like that suddenly, like your reach gets a lot wider, you know, and you absolutely you, yeah, you you have a bigger picture just out of for like forced to have a bigger picture of you rather than kind of just what we what we know um you know from what we're norm what's normal and what's comfortable you know so yeah exactly funny. it's been insane like that it's been like and so basically what i've been doing is i've been basically like trawling back through my entire music career trying to drag find people trying to actually find them I've, i tracked gabe down you know remember gabe the guy on the decks back in the jazz oh, and goodness. yeah of course Do you, you wouldn't believe where he is in costa rica now he's playing the terrapan you're kidding i will send you some <laughs> links we played we played a video uh, he wouldn't he wouldn't do a live set for me because i think it would have been a stretch from costa rica but anyway yeah. he wouldn't do a live set. but i managed to download some of his youtube videos and people loved it I'll send you some links. He's, he's just, you wouldn't recognize him. It's just incredible. <laughs> so I've been going back through my sort of back through the whole history of the Jazz and Blues project. And because that was another funny thing, I thought, right, shit, what are we going to do? And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll revive the Jazz and Blues project because I hadn't, it had been dormant for over 10 years, but mm. I, I the bank account still existed and it had £26.57 in it. Yes. I thought, yeah, that's a start. <laughs> yeah, that's about two pints in post COVID prices i think 
and the woman at the cart bank said this bank account is older than i am <laughs> nice i thought well that's made me feel really good thank you yeah you can always rely on a banker to cheer you up can't you yeah exactly yeah but i could but it actually, and of course the thing is it, it had a history that that project had a history you know we had funding yeah. and stuff so i thought yeah resurrect it and just put it all online and so we just sort of contact look back through all the old videos and posters yeah. from back in the day you know when you were still at school and you were came in and jamming and stuff yeah and, um yeah get in touch with people it's been it's been great like that oh super well, it's nice to be finally sort of part of it you know yes yeah it's great to have you it's great to have you sure you have your name has been mentioned many times so it'd be, oh. it'd be great for people to actually see your face and see you talking to us that's great <laughs> so tell it just tell me just tell me a little bit what i'll do is i'll um i'll edit this down to about five or ten minutes or something like yeah. that for the actual show but cool. um just tell us just tell us about because obviously um apart from pulling in the occasional favors like our album launch in the forum and stuff like that i haven't seen much of you since since those jazz and blues jam days so what's yeah. your what's your typical year like um, before <laughs> before covid hit what was your or yeah what kind of typical what was your typical thing that you were doing um i guess i was f freelancing as a trumpet player really so um initially i guess when i left music college that was a very very broad sort of um palette of different musical things and just i think just because you uh you just say yes to to everything you know and that was kind of my my attitude so i started off doing like an, anything from like 1920s bands where it's like incredibly specific the way you have to play mm -hmm. on these things it's just like oh no you can't play that note on that chord and you know you can't play this kind of thing and you're like oh okay you know that that um which is an education in itself like yeah all the way through to sort of um, free improvised crazy music via like effect pedals, fusion trumpet and bebop and big bands and doing the occasional sort of pop horn section gig and sort of sneaking in weddings and functions and stuff like that when I can as well. So that's that was kind of sort of how it started <laughs> yeah and then and it's interesting like when you do that people just kind of assume because they see you only in those places they just assume that that's what you do right um which is quite funny actually so one of the guys in the 1920s band i i bumped into him on the tube um probably five or six years after i stopped doing it um and he said, oh, I heard a track from your album on the radio the other day. And I was like, oh, that's that's cool. And he's like, I had no idea you played music like that. Oh, really? yeah. They they just assumed that I was, that I just liked doing my best to be like a bad Louis Armstrong impressionist or something like that. Right. And, and everyone you meet in those situations just kind of does that. So I think eventually it just kind of got to a point where a couple of those things kind of took over and then other things sort of went on to the back burner. So yeah. the Ronnie Scott's house bands took up a lot of my time for about five or six years um, and was in there with two or three different bands quite a lot. Was that and, with Mark Fletcher on drums? Is he? Yeah, yeah. So he lived in Norfolk for a bit. He did. In fact, Mark Fletcher was, he used to come and uh, guest at um, Boswell's nightclub, which was the yes. precursor of the jams. Yeah, he talked about it quite a lot, actually. Really? <laughs> My favourite thing about um, Mark's got an amazing story from when he lived in Norfolk, when he um, he used to bump into this guy at the end of his road who every time he saw him goes, are oh, you still doing your music? So, <laughs> and he, he'd be like, yeah, yeah. And he goes, what are you doing then, boy? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm playing with Ronnie Scott's band next week. He goes, Ronnie Scott, is he from Swatham? And he's just <laughs> like, no, it's just amazing. It's so amazing. I love it. Yeah. Um, and so... Yeah, so yeah, a frightening. Mark used to. He, he's one of these frightening drummers, isn't he? He is kind of scary. He's yeah, no, he's, he's a he's a lovely guy, but he's just oh, yeah. the technique is so it's just so right yeah. there, you know. Oh man, I mean, I I learned so much from playing with him. Just just in terms of things like 
intensity like yeah someone sits down at the drum kit and from the minute like the first second that they start playing they're like this is the level of intensity the music is going to be at yeah like yeah. are you going to match that yeah and it's like oh okay this is what i need to be able to do all the way through a gig if you're going to survive with i can remember back in the boswell's days when i was just literally just like really wet behind the ears and only just started jamming only just started getting into jazz and stuff like that and yeah. I got and uh, Paul Stevens, who was running those jams, oh, yeah. got Mark got Mark up, and you know it was just it was literally like standing with the rocket behind you. Oh yeah, it felt yeah. like this rocket was like propelling you. In fact, you really didn't have to do much; you just had to sort of hang on in there, and it would just. <laughs> yeah, that's a great thing, you know, because with a lot of drummers, sometimes they're almost a little bit too sensitive, in mm -hmm. a way that they think if you stop playing, that you want the music to just. Right. Calm down. Yeah. Mark will just keep going and it actually gives you a bit more license to just be just kind of settle with the music where it where it is at that point. And it's not just gonna sort of peter out if you stop doing something. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Quite it's, the good. it's really good, you know. Yeah. He's amazing. And he's played with like Dizzy Gillespie and wow, I didn't know that. James Moody and yeah, like loads of as well as like being in Ronnie's Ronnie's band is like a direct link to like some of the master. Oh, I had no idea. All I, knew, I mean, all I knew was that Paul used to get all these amazing players up. We didn't really know. We were so wet behind the ears. We didn't really even know what the hell was yeah, going on. We just knew it was a good thing. I mean, because yeah. those Boswell nights, I mean, they was like at Boswell's, it was like about 120, 100, 120 capacity club. Hmm. And it was like a Tuesday night and it was rammed, absolutely yeah. rammed with all ages you know a lot of young people and that was like we that went on for years and that was mm. that was really how me and frank got our jazz playing together we did it mm. by just going to that and then there was a big band and that's how we did it really it was like yeah. that was our education you know yeah and then, and then what happened was paul left to go and get a proper job <laughs> i think it was the director of music services for hampshire or something like that lovely you know? yeah that was what that's what he did when he got out of norfolk yeah. Uh, and uh, and that's when what we did is we took it to the arts centre mm. and because we had to pay rent and everything, we managed to get it funded through the Arts Council. We got like a few grants and stuff and then we managed to write, managed to make that run for seven years. And that yeah. was, but we, we learned how to do it there, you know, how to do it, how to create an evening, how to get the people in. And because it's quite a job in itself, making it oh, running a really successful open mic night is like finding it's a bit like putting together a, um, you know, a set list in a way, you know, you try and think. You know what's going to be good after that, and it's, it's yeah. satisfying. It's a it's a oh, satisfying, yeah. satisfying thing to do in itself. It's an yeah. art form in its own right, isn't it? Really, it is really. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Those arts council forms are a nightmare as well. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go for any of the real heavy duty ones. I went for the awards for all. I got two of those. Mm. Um, and the thing is, because there were so many people, because the place was so rammed all the time, and even though people were only paying two quid on the door, yeah, we actually didn't need that much funding. Actually, you know, it's just like yeah, it's good, uh, and it. You get more support that way if you if you can show you're doing something that people actually like actually then, want to go to and actually yeah. will pay two quid for you mean yeah. <laughs> they don't necessarily like funding things that you can't really go but nobody really nobody really right. wants to see this or hear this no right yeah <laughs> difficult but it's quite affirming in a way actually isn't it when you when you get something like that it is it was great it was really good yeah, and a community champions grant i think i got saw one of those and and looking back at the um some of the really old videos with Gabe on decks, Bernie on bass, Simon Brown on piano, yeah, you know, and then Will Wright on drums, or or yeah. Danny um, yeah. Howard, who's now yeah. in Chicago, by the way. He is with his bright yellow shirt. Yeah, oh, I miss Danny. <laughs> I really do. Do you know what? I actually caught up with him. I actually, I actually, uh, I met him in Chicago a few Maybe. years ago, quite a few years ago. I happened to be there, and uh, yeah, it was so great to see him. We went up this big skyscraper and had breakfast and looked out and everything. He seems to be doing really well there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's good. It's good. Yeah, yeah you. I mean, you get all of these characters, and like, I don't think. Yeah, you just never really forget them in those kind of formative years, do you? You know, they're so no. sort of strongly etched in your mind and the yeah. whole experiences and everything. It's great. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, I've, I've I've actually put you one of your tweets, which you said those jam nights were so important. That's become a, like a tagline of good. <laughs> some of our publicity. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely true. You know, I um, so if you've ever come across Nicholas Payton, the American trumpet player, no, um, 
he's sort of like, I guess, just the generation after Winter Marsalis. Um, yeah. And yeah, he was just talking on a, a podcast the other day about how important it is to have these sessions where there are, there's a mix of older and younger musicians and and how it import, how important it is to have both of those things that the youngsters get to hang out with the old the older musicians and learn from them but actually how important it is for people who are a bit more established to go and to make sure that they they give back when they received in that way when they were yeah they were younger and how like jazz is very much an oral tradition and an oral history and it is and if you don't have those elders then you're not getting the full story you know so no, that's think, right yeah so that's and also it's all it's all and the other thing about it is jazz has always been based around a scene there's always been yeah. a scene like a club or some kind of oh, scene yeah. you know yeah there has to be a place in a way where people can hang out and that can happen I can, I, I, i'll never forget that night when that guy came in from god knows where i can't remember playing the banjo and he did Oh, when the Saints. No he way. Was an older guy. I don't know if you were there that night. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like playing Oh, when the Saints with with the thing, and, and Gabe had it on vinyl. He had actually had it on vinyl, and he no pulled way. out this vinyl record of Oh, when the Saints, put it on the decks, and started scratching it in with him. That okay. I'll never forget that. I mean, that's just exactly what you've just been describing. You know, just yeah. that. Yeah. You know. And I remember him saying, and Gabe was going again, <laughs> and the guy went, "Oh, that's a bit like a washboard, isn't it?" <laughs> amazing <laughs> amazing well why not yeah why not? absolutely yeah it's rhythm I mean, again, genres you know? <laughs> yeah it's just rhythm yeah but that's what you get when you chuck people together the whole exactly, yeah the whole thing has always been a melting pot and it should it should continue to be that way be like that. yeah yeah well hopefully we're going to get back to something like that at some point yeah yeah although there's some people at jam sessions that I'm quite, I'd be quite glad for some social distancing from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. That's the thing, yeah. Getting a little bit further away from the guitar players with the really loud amps. That's fine. Right. I'm going to be happy with that, but yeah. No, nah, I'm only messing. We love guitar players. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, funny enough, I've just been during lockdown I've got I've been because uh, you know Fran and I one of the things that really saved us actually because Fran and I've got this duo gig, duo thing mm. together and I've been using uh, one of these uh, I don't know if you ever come across it. It's a push two. It's an Ableton oh, controller. Nice. Yeah, and it's uh, it's. I used to use an MPC when I started. I sort of did it the the hard hip hop way, you know, using an MPC or MIDI and you know little wheels and everything. But now I've got yeah. one of these, and actually you can do a pretty effective guitar lead on it. So I can you know I can live my fantasy of playing a lead guitar. <laughs> now. Yeah, that's why I got all the effects pedals for the trumpet. Being oh, really? frustrated you know just in certain bands you just like the sound of the trumpet on its own just kind of sounds a little bit weird like yeah. if you're surrounded by rock sort of like distortion guitar and sure. sort of um electric bass and really loud drums sometimes your trumpet weirdly just sounds a little bit sort of clean in the middle of all of that I can imagine yeah it's yeah. quite it's quite weird because you you think of it as being quite a bright sort of aggressive sound but actually yeah for me it doesn't always quite sit where i want it to so yeah yeah i totally get that idea of just being like i want to i want to change my sound i want to do something different and you know yeah, yeah it's good technology's fun right <laughs> yeah it's been great it's been really good fun because um and also it's been interesting for the people who come up because some of the people you know there's not very much else to do on a friday night so we do get people to come every single night yeah <laughs> and so they've actually seen us go oh look i can do this like the very first time you know and yeah. then like a year later i did I, we play oya come eva you know and i so i play lead guitar it's on that and um i've been i've been dubbed cliffos nice <laughs> by the audience i like it so, yeah there we are I like it. and also it's just another sound texture to yeah in the duo mix you know Fran's been, Fran's, been, Fran's been learning the congas. Amazing. Did Very she get any help from Danny? Sorry? She had Zoom lessons from Danny Howard uh, on congas. No, actually, she's been known from Kath, Kath Evans. Do you know her? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Kath, Brilliant. Kath's been giving her lessons, yeah. Awesome. Very, very popular with the audience, not so popular with me when I have to carry them up the basement stairs into the front room every Friday night. <laughs> no. And also having to listen to conga practice. 
Yeah, luckily. You're coming down the stairs being like, <laughs> getting your groove on. Oh, yeah, I can't it's... stop dancing. Yeah. There's congas everywhere. I know. <laughs> luckily, this is pretty well soundproof. But actually, have, after a year of, well, partly, it's a, partly a financial thing, to be fair, and also partly a fact that it takes an hour and a half to take everything up into the front room and set it up with all the lights and the live streaming and everything. And um, we're actually um, moving to the coast. We bought a place where we're selling this, we're buying a place to, so we can pay off everything. So we went and got something out going. Yeah. And um, we've got the place we're buying is much smaller, but it's got a shop that we're going to convert into a studio so we can have everything set up all the Amazing. time. Amazing. Yeah. So once we get it all done and COVID's climbed down, you want a, a little bit of a break by the seaside, you'll have to come oh. up and visit us. Delightful. <laughs> It's, yes, literally, it's literally two minutes from the sea. You just walk around the corner and get your beautiful. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, so that's going to be a real relief actually to be yeah. to ha not have to set everything everything all up. Although it's of course very good practice remembering where all the leads go into the mixing desk and everything. Yeah, you know what I mean. Gosh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. We had to learn how to do the lighting. I mean, it was okay at the beginning because Ella, our daughter, was um, with uh, in the first lockdown. She was with us, lockdown with us. So she was she's like 20 and she was like pretty bright and she uh learned how to operate the lighting desk operate all the live streaming stuff and everything so we had like a technician there in-house ca in captivity <laughs> but now then she's buggered off to university now yeah. fran's doing the lights i'm doing the live streaming and playing and triggering all the different samples and everything on the you know push so it's all you know, the workload is like yeah <laughs> it gets quite stressful doesn't it I mean, it does. Yeah. But although having said that, after 50 shows, you get pretty chilled with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> practice, you know, but yeah, I found when I was doing my tour for my band, I think it's back in 2019, I think it was. That was when we saw you, didn't we? Saw you in Norwich. I'm not sure. I think I did it one. Play the, um, Playhouse. Playhouse. Or was it the no, Market? Yeah, Market yeah I think that was the no November 2018. I think that was. Oh, was it? Oh, um, right. But yeah, so the tour was the next summer. But yeah, um, yeah, just like being a band leader and being in charge of like you know making sure everybody gets fed and mm -hmm. I was filming all the gigs as well, which was part of the Arts Council stuff. So running around like a crazy person, setting up cameras everywhere and doing all of that and you do sometimes it actually gets to the point of playing and you're like oh, I haven't really even thought about what no. the music side of thing is going to be yet because you've just been so taken up with everything else and yeah I think going back to arts council forms as well if I ever do one again I might like add on some funding to get someone to come and help I think that's a really great idea it I really think so is. yeah really you just want to be if you can um free to just think about what you're going to do musically absolutely like yeah that's having right. to run out and sell cds and do mailing lists and do stuff yeah. like that and not really being able to take the time to sort of soak everything up and enjoy it, it yeah be, i know what you mean is a bit stressful isn't it but yeah it is yeah yeah understandable though because we all we operate in a world without managers and agents and things like that most of the time um yeah. and ultimately you it always comes down to overheads doesn't it and you're like well gonna have to do this myself because can't afford, to, can't afford no. to pay an extra band member or do this or that so it's but. partly that and i think partly because the whole because the technology is so accessible now it's actually possible to do it whether it's a good mm. idea is another thing but yeah. it's actually possible you know to do that you know definitely you know i was talking to my son about that because my the, my live streaming son because he's like um he's right in there he's just actually he's just uh sold his one of his businesses he's like a techie music guy he in fact he had drum lessons off um danny back in the day awesome. when he was a little kid <laughs> and he's a great drummer he, he drummed we did a little european tour in 2015 just after we did that album launch that you were on and uh, he he got an octopad, programmed it with all the drum sounds, and came along with us and did all the drumming. It was great. But anyway, he's right in the sort of music industry, and he was telling us like forty thousand Spotify tracks are loaded up every week or day. Or I mean, it's just insane, you know. Yeah. And it's just like the whole thing is just 
everything just the whole technology thing has just made everything the tools so much more accessible and much much easier to use mm-hmm. uh, you know but tools are not the same as skills are they there's still a no. need to develop skills and the trouble yeah. is you're right if you're doing a lot of different roles it's hard to focus on one thing yeah this was another interesting thing that um that guy nicholas payton was talking about in yeah. terms of deciding who like who sort of became the next sort of big thing i think probably more so in the states but yeah. it would it would always come from those older musicians having bands and then spotting younger musicians and yeah. your sort of like passport into that world was does somebody give you a gig and do they want you to play with them um and it was quite interesting how he was talking about when that sort of elder younger relationship falls apart that's when like record companies and people like spotify people come in and suddenly it's like those like the decisions about who who's going to get promoted or who's going to you know get the exposure or things like that now is no longer really in the hands of people who really actually know what they're talking about and yeah sure that's probably a fair point yeah and it and i think technology probably does have a lot a lot to do with that because you know with spotify playlisting and things like that you just have to know the right person to get your track into a playlist and then off it goes and you know suddenly you're reaching millions of people around the world and yeah like you're saying it it's completely saturated but everything's in one place yeah which is which is insane when you think about it and there's no longer that thing of like wandering into the record store and someone having been vetted to the point where a record label feels like they want to invest in you no that's right to the point where your music is pushed to the front of the queue no that's right it's, yeah it's fascinating isn't it it is really interesting how it's all changed because of course the thing is it's all well i know of this from ella our daughter because she's in uh uses tiktok a lot mm-hmm. and tiktok is the way that especially new contemporary artists are breaking through just because people are attracted to the music and they use them as back backings for their own uploads to tiktok you know it's just yeah like, yeah I have to say that some of the artists she lit that she you know that let me listen to when we were doing when i was doing a long car journey taking <laughs> her off to lancaster she she chose to go to lancaster university because she thought it wouldn't be a nice long distance from us but of course it was a great idea before covid yeah because she was using the train but now it's like can you give me a lift <laughs> <laughs> yeah five hours later yeah that's it that's oh dear it. round trip but anyway i don't mind i get i got to listen to a lot of the music that she listened to and i have to say yeah. some of it was pretty awesome actually because these people the people who do manage to fight their way up to the top of that mass of people hmm. often do have something that's oh yeah I there's got to be something appealing about it exactly yeah for sure um it's just whether you like that sort of appeal or not i guess and if you do oh, then that's true. Yeah. you never know but yeah i mean you definitely hear things definitely hear things more off spotify for me i don't really i don't really use tiktok no. i haven't invented that bar yet but definitely stuff comes through on my um you know playlists and recommendations and things where it might not be something that I would actively go after but no you can always take something positive out of it out of any piece of music I think yeah but yeah it's a funny old vibe isn't it it's really changed everything has really changed yeah yeah and it's scary because it's it doesn't really um you have to be very successful on Spotify to be at all successful if that makes sense yeah yeah um so it's it's weird for me who i mean i i'm not going to get tens and thousands of streams every month um but it's it's kind of it's that thing where you sort of look at the the numbers that you do get and they're probably still hot like the reach is probably still further than i would have just from going around the regional jazz clubs in England and Scotland and playing gigs. Sure. But nobody buys your music. No. 
and so that's the that's the thing it's like you you're in this sort of middle ground where you kind of got a little bit more exposure so you kind of think maybe it's worth me doing this yeah. but actually if i kept all my music in one place like i use bandcamp now i don't know if sure. you're familiar with that yeah um, absolutely yeah no and like i don't want to bang on about talking about money on a music podcast but like selling a hundred rec- albums on Bandcamp, yeah. would I'd need um, like five hundred thousand plays on Spotify or something like that, or more, maybe like a million plays on Spotify to sure, to make yeah. the same money. So it's like, do you do you try and make a hundred really good fans yeah. that you know are going to invest in your music because they love you as an artist or they lo- they love what you do, yeah, or do you just go for the big numbers but actually like you're not really making any money and therefore you, you're going to struggle to create more music because yeah. ultimately making one album funds the next one if it sure. works well yeah sure. if that doesn't work then what are you gonna do <laughs> like yeah so i think that's true i mean i think that's the i think that's the thing to take out of the the whole digital thing is the relationship thing i mean you know it is it's all to do with with offering something and creating a relationship isn't it yeah. And that's what we found with the live streams. I mean, you know, it's been so random. You know, we've got people, they've been local, but we've got people from all over the world who like have yeah. found out of it through word of mouth. And we've never really pushed it with social media or anything. It's mainly been through word of mouth. Yeah. And okay, the numbers are not very big, but those people are they are you know, they're we kind of know them now. Yeah. Well, loyalty sometimes. Yeah. And if you're a really, really big fish, like loyalty is more important than popularity. Yeah, I think we true, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Just knowing that you've got enough people that you rely on, and you also feel like you're giving them what they want. Like it's not just about you taking from. No, 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 no. Sure, you, you, you know, yeah. you're creating things that because people, those people like it. Absolutely, yeah, and I think that's a really important thing that we found, especially with the live streams, is because we've we've got the chat going all the time, and we always download the chat, we read it afterwards, and stuff like that. Yeah. You, you've got there's a two way thing there, and you get encouragement when you do st- stuff like, um, you know, people like, did you do it again? <laughs> yeah, simple as that, you know, <laughs> or yeah. you do something like it, you know. Yeah, and one of the things I because I because um, uh, one of the things I've been doing is like totally like uh, just at least a couple of numbers just jamming them just like putting loops on and just because one of the things i can do a lot with obviously with this is things like put loops on mute stuff out drop everything right down mm-hmm. the cool thing we found with um uh with the congas is if i've got um if you reduce the backing stuff down so there's only like one thing going on like a bass riff or something yeah um then if I'm playing something on the keyboards or the saxophone or on, on here and Fran's playing the congas, we're actually out, no, uh, we're outnumbering the sequence parts, you know? Yeah. I mean? And that means that groove, we're in control of that groove. Yeah. And that's when really, it really does get quite exciting, you know? Yeah. And, and we want to get more into that as well. Um, one of our sort of artistic aims <laughs> is to um, go more into live looping. I'm just a little bit terrified of it, but I mean, that's a great thing to actually create the stuff, actually create everything right yeah. there you know so yeah and the trouble with that, love that. that sorry people love that like yeah they absolutely love seeing something built up from the ground and yeah. i think actually it can really help non-musicians like start to understand how music is put together a little bit as well i think it's really that's it's true really, it? it's really yeah. cool it's really cool because you you hear you hear all the components don't you build up yeah 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 and they see you do it Whereas yeah. a lot of the time, you know, I guess the difference between seeing, like seeing a band play or a band rehearse yeah, or just hearing something on the radio. And and also, I guess with jazz, like sometimes people just think it is 100% improvised. Right. And how, you know, you end up everybody playing, you know, a standard or something like that that it's just a kind of magic that everybody happens to be playing the same chord sequence or something. Yeah. But what you're, you're describing is really closer to that of something that really is like done on the spot. Like this is, this is the live thing that people want, want to see, you know, that. that yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So we're moving, we're moving slowly into that. I'm having some piano lessons from Simon Brown. 
excellent. He's the I best. Got as far as where to put your fingers, like one, two, three. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only the only disadvantage with that, of course, is you've got to learn how to play everything, you know. But actually, just you have to keep the music simple. That's the art of it, I think. And the great thing about the push is, is it's very good for things like guitar and bass because mm. you've got a grid. It's very much like a fretboard. Mm. And then you've got the keyboard, obviously for the harmony. And then we've got our very own conga rhythm section right here. Perfect. <laughs> what else do you need? <laughs> yeah. Um, can't yeah. think of much. No, no exactly. It. Yeah. That's, so that's where we're going to kind of go. Amazing. So actually, talking about sequence backing and stuff like that, because you did a tour with us three, didn't you? That yes. Was a while ago now. <laughs> yeah. What was that like? 2010, I think it was. Was it? Yeah. 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 It was hilarious. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, yeah. It kind of seems like a million miles away to be thinking about getting on a tour bus and going around Europe. But yeah, I mean, the technology was pretty archaic. Yeah. Um, so all the drum, yeah, it was only the drums that were um, pre-recorded. Yeah. And they were, I think they were on a mini disc. Really? Whoa. Yeah. And <laughs> That's hilarious yeah um basically you just press play on the mini disc player and then there's a click and then the band plays and the the structure of the song is like a hundred percent fixed um for how long the loop how, how long the, the the drum track was so it's like completely linear it's not looped or anything absolutely like linear yeah and oh. then the bass and the keys were live and the horns and the backing so every uh the, sorry the the rappers so yeah yeah everything else was um was played live but it just means you can't make a single mistake no so everybody had to know exactly how many bars and how many repeats of each section were and one night something oh yeah yeah the the mini disc player kept playing, but there was something wrong with the feed from the mini disc to the to the PA system and the monitors. So yeah. the drums just stopped halfway through a tune, and you just go, "Okay, what's happening?" And one of the um, rappers, um, who, who was called Akil, he is one of the most amazing beatboxers and freestyle rappers I like ever heard. He's like, he's out. He's outrageous. And yeah. he just started, he stopped doing the rap and started beatboxing and covered the drums. Whoa. And um, and then it came, like they fixed it and it came back on before we'd finished the song. Yeah. And he hadn't dropped a beat and the, and the beatbox and the mini disc came back in and we just finished the tune and everyone had finished in the right place. Whoa. Which is absolutely outrageous when you think about it. It is, that's incredible. He's metronomic. He literally yeah. like, I mean, I, I can't, I don't think there are many drummers that would probably do that and not like lose like one beat a minute or something. <laughs> no, that's incredible. Yeah, it was, it was, we were all kind of pretty shocked when we got to the end of that. But yeah, it was a very strange experience because there were elements of like the improvisation thing that, like the sort of um, communication side of things. Cause obviously yeah. with like live bass and live piano, it kind of felt like there was a bit of a conversation, but yeah. I did yeah. find with the, like the, the MIDI drums that it kind of, it, I didn't like not having the communication with the drummer. No, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just the way that music is and that, yeah, and sure. it's fine and and it, there was still scope for something but it just kind of felt like the when we were talking about mark fletcher at the beginning and yeah like intensity like you might want to change that yeah and you don't really have that option so that was the only thing like and i guess with what you're describing with being able to loop and change things you've got that option to build stuff yeah. up and and add stuff in whereas we didn't really we didn't really have that on that on that tour but no it was lots of fun it was yeah. lots of fun was it yeah i can imagine yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah ate lots of good food <laughs> well that's the main thing that's great isn't it yeah it is actually yeah <laughs> but it just seem it does seem very it does seem very long way away doesn't it to be able to just travel from one country to the next but it will get yeah. it will come back I'm sure. well we don't know whether musicians are even going to be able to tour with oh because of brexit EU. yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it's looking like £300 per person to get a work a visa in each country at the moment. Yeah, I saw that. Like I know. Six piece band, and you go to five countries. Yeah, I know. There's no way it's ever going to happen. No. So they're they're going to have to do something at some point. But Absolutely. Yeah, I know. It's a total, total double whammy, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Brexit. Yeah. The pandemic is just like. Yeah. I mean, we just have no idea what we're coming back to, really. Um, it's a little bit scary. But yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, that's it. Just keep going with the live streams. We'll have to well, keep, work towards our 100th show. I mean, I thought yeah. it's funny. I just thought, oh, this is not going to be very for very long. You know, and then suddenly here we are at our 50th show. And there's just no, you know, and and I remember saying quite early on, as long as the pandemic says, as long as you need us, we'll be here supporting you playing every Friday night. And a little did I know what sort of commitment yeah. I was making. And Fran yeah. was like, oh, no, let's not do, let's do like one a month. I said, no, mm -hmm. let's do one a week. Let's do one yeah. a week. Because especially at the beginning of the pandemic, a week was a long time, you know, when yeah. nothing else is happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've had a few breaks. We've had to have a break in the summer last year because various different bits of equipment broke and we were knackered. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah. so apart from the odd week we've had off, we've more or less kept going, you know. So, mm. well, you can tell, can't you? It's just been over just over a year or something and it's like 50 shows. So we haven't yeah. had too many nights off. But it's worked both ways, to be fair, because it's been it's been good for us to have a regular gig that we can, yeah. you know, we're essentially, well, I mean, we are essentially performing after all, even though we're not directly in front of the audience, we've got a good communication with them. Mm. And it's been, and actually as a result, we've actually been, you know, practicing and just, it's just kept us going as much as yeah. we've helped at the audience, hopefully get through it. So yeah. You know, good. What can you do? <laughs> yeah, keep going. Yes, that's right. Keep going. Yeah. Well, I'm sure if we get to a hundredth show, I'll get you. Maybe get you on to get to get you on live. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Be very up for that. Yeah. Brilliant. Go, go to the chip shop as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Got to get your food in, right? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. The Grosvenor Fish Bar is the classic place. God, I miss it so much. Yeah. <laughs> There's no decent chip shop near me, so. Oh, there isn't. No. Uh, no. Sadly, not not a proper one anyway. Oh well, that's no good at all. Yeah, there's a few places. There's a fun one called Poppies. I don't know if yeah. you've ever come across Poppies Fish Bar. No. Over, I think there's one in near near Farringdon or something like that. It's been oh, there quite a long time, but they they do live music, or they used to anyway. I don't know if they still do. Yeah. That's a nice gig. Get your fish and chips and. Sounds like a yeah. Sounds like you've got your priorities right there. Always. <laughs> <laughs> It's always what the food is first and then like oh and what what are we playing oh okay yeah. <laughs> cool. very good excellent yeah. okay it's been a pleasure talking to you it's amazing been great to catch up i think I, I think we can leave it there and i'll um i'll edit it i'll edit some of it down and uh, put it into a small feature on our 50th That's show next awesome Friday. did you um did you get my uh video link yes i did i haven't had a chance to download it but dropbox link isn't it yeah it should be should all be there and if it isn't i'll get in touch with you okay. but otherwise it'll be it'll be right lovely thank you very much okay good we'll keep in touch i'm getting your newsletter so i do find out what your latest what you're getting up to yeah little bits and pieces here and there <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and hopefully not before very long we'll see you up in norwich again oh i can't wait yeah i haven't seen my family since last june i think or july so we haven't all oh, right yeah, yeah yeah so i think we're looking forward to seeing each other again right. yep <laughs> long time but it's not the worst that anyone's been through but it's still not the best no i know what you mean yeah yeah it's it's a long time yeah cool well hopefully catch you soon yep okay thanks very much thanks, for Chris. talking to us and uh we'll see you hear from you soon awesome take care